This is the Trek Fuel EXE, a lightweight trail electric mountain bike. Now out the box, the bike rides really sweet. It's designed for trail riding. It rides sharp and fairly agile. Meet the Trek Fuel EXE RR Edition. A massive 38 fork from Olin's and an Olin's coil. I really like to mess around my bikes and have been really curious to see just what you can do with the Fuel EXE. So here we have some quick and dirty experiments to see just what is possible. I've swapped out quite a few components as you can see here. Different cockpit, some skinnier than stock tires with DHR2's front and rear, double down and max grip out the front. So let's go through the bike. I've got to say firstly, doesn't it look so sick with that Olin's coil, the RXF 38 fork in that yellow. It's like it was all made for this bike. It just works amazingly well. Just talking about aesthetics, but let's go through it in a little bit more detail. So this Olin's RXF 38 M2 fork is 170 millimeters. So it's 20 mil more than stock. Now I've got to say, probably voids the warranty. Trek say you can go up to 160. I've gone up to 170. Just want to put it out there that it's probably going to avoid the warranty on this bike, but this is a dirty test on how it will ride with the suspension setup. So it's a 38mm stanchion fork, so it's really beefy out the front. It's definitely added some weight to the bike as well. And it's set the bike, it's raked it out a little bit, it's raised the front a little bit. It's running at 63.5 degrees on my measurer. This is the brand new coil from Olin's and they've refined it over the previous generation slightly. It's now got more differences between the clickers on here. I've overstroked the rear as well. And what that means is the dimensions of the shock are the same between the eye and the eye. So it's not changed the rear in terms of any kind of layout here, but it compresses further. So you actually get more rear wheel travel. So you get around 152 mil of rear wheel travel. So we've taken this bike from a 150 front, 140 rear, to a 170 front and a 152 rear. It's pretty significant. Now the bottom bracket height hasn't changed significantly either because I've gone for 2.4 tires, these Maxxis DHR2s on the front and the rear. You can run them in both front and rear. In my experience, it works on the front actually pretty well. It looks pretty sweet. I'm really interested to see how it handles, but I'm a little bit worried that the front is gonna be really high now. It's definitely gonna change the balance of the bike a little bit. If you think it's gonna be a bit more kind of higher at the front and the weight distribution is gonna have changed. So let's go and hit some trails and see how it feels. Definitely feels way slacker. One degree slacker. Ooh. <laughs> so plush. Ooh. <laughs> it flies got to be more aggressive got to get over the front more oh my god so plush feels like an enduro bike basically is with a 60 3.5 degree head angle now oh. way more stable bike just smashed through roots oh my god it's so different it's amazing what a little travel change can do. Oh, it's such a ripper. It's got really dark, hard to see. That's oh, amazing. But amazing as it may be downhill, it had some massive compromises. The balance of the bike became quite off. I really struggled to get front end grip. Oh. Okay, what I've done is I've put the compression all the way to uh, number three on this Odin's coil, just to try and stop it squatting down a little bit at the back to try and balance it out a little bit. My weight is kind of a bit more rearward biased. Yeah, and the front kind of wanted to run a bit high. And um, you can see I'm running loads of stack on this uh, bar and stem here. And I'm also running some 38 mil rise bars. So I've got loads of stack at the front. Definitely need to experiment. But one of the things I'm really curious on is also running the flip chip in high to kind of balance it out a little bit. 
but with these adjustments, we'll do this little run again. See if it's made any difference whatsoever. Woo. Yeah, feels a bit better already. Oh, it's tight. Oh man, it's so sharp. Woo. Oh, I don't want to wash out on these berms. Yeah. <laughs> Such a fun bike. Just those little differences on the setup of the bike have made a considerable difference on the handling. I do find that with most longer travel, the suspension is really key. Obviously, when you get them out of the box, the manufacturer does quite a lot of that work for you. The geometry is pretty sound. There's always, always room to tinker around. So just back in my workshop, I've changed the flip chip to the high position. So I'm hoping, well, it will level the bike out. So it's raised the rear a little bit and that really slack head angle, it's gonna have steepened up a little bit. So just in here, flip chip, you can see it says low, high. Super easy to change. You could actually change this out on the trail if you really wanted to. So there you go, we're showing around 64.5, 64.5 degree head angle which is, yeah, I mean, that's still pretty sweet. 64 and a half degree, 170. The BB height is still around 342, 343, three, which is not bad. Now, whoa. oh, it's so snapping. Yeah, I'm capable, like really agile, but still with the big travel, big Olin's 38 fork and, uh, Oh, whoa. gotta be so careful. So scary. But it's handling like a ripper. Oh boy. Whoa. That is sick. That was amazing. That was so good. It was so different to the first ride. Just these little geometry changes can make a significant impact. Now, I am well outside of the scope of what this e-bike is designed for. Trek didn't design this really for people to put a 170 fork on and uh, overstroke it and put the flip chip in high 29.29 but just because they didn't design it doesn't mean you can't experiment i'm all for that with bikes i like to tinker i like to mess around and try and find these optimum settings because out of the box they're kind of like a one size fits all but you can tailor them to a certain extent now i did feel down there it bottomed out the fork a little bit i'm pretty sure well something bottomed out I'm not 100 percent sure if it was the fork because it looks like there's a little bit more travel left on there maybe it was because it doesn't normally use the full travel um, but something bottomed out so yeah definitely more experimentation only a little one over one of the kind of jumps into the compressions it's quite a heavy landing but i gotta say it feels so good this is the best it's felt like out of all the configurations i've ridden this is basically maintaining the stock geometry um the bottom bracket might be slightly higher but when you're sagged into that travel it's around about the same but you've got a massive 38 fork coil on it and it doesn't this bike look so sick oh the bike is so flush <laughs> i'm so not used to wet weather riding Woo. lots of the full fat bikes they are so capable but this still has that different feel to it still has that lightweight bike feel even though it's 19 kilos that's still a good five six kilos lighter than many full fats even the lighter weight full fats are still around 23 kilos so you imagine like i always use this as a as a way of explaining it to people you imagine strapping four liters of coca-cola or water to your frame and imagine the difference that your bike would feel with all of that weight strapped to it now for me i leave it in turbo all the time so my rides on this are like one and a half to two hours in turbo which is fine solo i'm not sure if i was riding with groups of people that are on full power bikes i could keep up especially for the longer rides but for a one and a half hour to two hour blast you've got a massively massively capable 
enduro bike. So what have I learned here with this little experiment? Well, first off, the bike is quite flexible in its ability to take slightly longer travel. Now, I did mention at the beginning, the 170 will void the warranty, but Trek say, and they specifically state that 160 fork is absolutely fine. So if you just want to slacken it out a little bit and run a longer fork, you can just change the front fork. You can even change the air spring in the Lyric that it comes with to give you a bit more front travel and it will slacken out by about 0.5 degrees. But let's go through the configurations I run. So first of all, I put the 170 fork on and the coil to give 170 front, 152 rear wheel travel, left the flip chip in low. Now it felt so good in that configuration when just pointing it downhill. It felt actually like you could pretty much take on anything in that configuration. Although when I started tipping it into berms and trying to corner, the front was definitely too high, understeer pretty much everywhere, and I had to get my weight really far over the front wheel to keep the balance. Because you imagine, basically, it's kind of gone like that. It's flipped up the front. It's kind of choppered it out a little bit, but it did smash through everything in that configuration. It was slack, it was 63.5 degrees, but the main thing I noticed was the weight distribution was too off in that configuration. It was way rearward biased. The front kept kind of wanting to wash out on the berms and it kind of made it a one trick pony, which is just bombing through stuff as fast as you like, just in a straight line. It was brilliant for that. But when I changed the flip chip out the rear into the high position, it's basically leveled the bike out and brought it almost to its stock geometry, just with longer travel and fit in the 2.4 rear tires meant that the bottom bracket isn't so high, so I'm not like raising the center of gravity. And actually in this configuration, it works pretty well. The head angle remains almost as stock. It's a little bit slacker, not much, but it's kind of in that ballpark figure of how it comes out the box. But what I've really learned about this is if Trek bought out a slash E, that would be pretty amazing. This basically is getting close to that, but there's a lot of faffing around. There's a lot of stuff that you need to do, voiding warranties and all that stuff that's not really recommended at all. But if they bought out a 170, 160 slashy at 19 kilos, yeah, boy, they would have a really competent bike. So Trek, if you are watching a slash EXE, yeah, I'm pretty sure that would be a ripper.